sudden cardiac arrest, that isn't a heart attack. What's the difference? Well, I think w when people typically think about a heart attack, they're usually thinking in, in their mind someone's had a myocardial infarction where that uh, the, the blood supply to the heart itself is somehow compromised. Uh, and that is a, a disease more of older age uh, where people build up uh, plaques and blockages of the coronary arteries. In, in young people, uh, coronary artery disease is much uh, less uncommon. In fact, it's fairly rare. Uh, but, but children and young adults do uh, die suddenly from cardiac arrest. And the vast majority of these cases are electrical in nature. And they can uh, be caused by uh, a variety of problems, such as wolf parkinson white syndrome, prolonged QT syndrome, uh, uh, Brugada syndrome, or patients may have different types of cardiomyopathy, a hypertrophic cardiomyopathy or a dilated cardiomyopathy, and all these patients are susceptible to dangerous or malignant arrhythmias. Many times we don't even have any indication that it occurring with some symptoms before, so maybe a good idea of a kid's at a sporting event like a football game or gym athletics, they probably should have some automatic defibrillators around, it wouldn't be a bad idea. Yeah, I, I think that, that it's definitely a, a good idea uh, to have uh, these around. The uh, New York State uh, has uh, programs for AEDs or automatic external defibrillators in, in schools, and there's funding available for that uh, across the state. Uh, Are they very expensive? Uh, defibrillators, uh, they run uh, home defibrillators you can get for about $1,000 upwards to $3,000. Uh, so for a school system, it, it seems to be uh, very reasonable. Uh, I think that for each community, uh, they have to uh, look at uh, a couple of different things. One is the, the cost of the equipment and training people and, and the, the availability of this equipment in the uh, uh, sports facilities uh, compared to uh, whether or not they want to just supply first responders with the equipment. So uh, if you can have police and firemen have these, this equipment in their car and they have good response time, uh, then you may not need it at every uh, field or every uh, event, as long as you have people who know how to use it and can get it there uh, in a, within a few minutes. We always recommend a school system should have a, a, an emergency plan, including things like that if possible, or in your case you mentioned they have a quick responding team you know, maybe right across the street in the school there was a first aid station in the town, so that would be a pretty good substitute. But the idea is if you're prepared for a problem, I always believe you probably will never get the problem. So, a a Absolutely, and, and uh, it, it's, it's imperative uh, to not only draw up a plan, but to have periodic testing of the plan and make sure if it's in a school that teachers and the, the health personnel are all aware of where the equipment is located and, and who, to at, who to call and what steps to take in order to get the responders there in an immediate crisis. The other thing uh, is also the, the health department should also track uh, patients who may be at higher risk, patients who have uh, previous heart disease, and know where they are and what activities they're engaging in and, and perhaps uh, make uh, the, the trainers or the coaches aware that there may be an issue and that they need to be uh, you know, highly suspicious uh, if these patients are, are complaining of, of symptoms.